Apple has released another version of the Apple Watch OS, including the iOS and other software releases, so let's talk about the Apple Watch OS 7.4 and let's begin. This topic is a lot more talked about than, let's say, the previous 7.3.3, but since I make videos for every new version, I'm not gonna skip on this one. So what you should know about it is that it is available for every Apple Watch starting from the Series 3. That means that every Apple Watch which is newer than this one is actually going to support it. And you should also know that you cannot install this update unless your iPhone, which is paired to the Apple Watch, runs iOS 14.5. If you try to update, you're going to get this message, which basically tells you to update your iPhone first. The size of this is a couple of hundred megabytes depending on your Apple Watch. And you can already see all of the or most of the features included in this software update. But it is so much more than you can actually see here. I also want to quickly take a look at the storage before and after updating to the latest version of the watch os so before my apple watch run was running the watch os 7.3.3 with the capacity of 26.2 gigabytes and available of 21.3 and after updating to 7.4 you can see that the capacity stayed exactly the same at 26.2, but the available jumped up to 22.1, which is actually good. It's almost one gigabyte. I mean, pretty much just by updating, the capacity didn't increase, but I believe that only some cached files or something just got deleted and simply we have more storage we can use for our songs. And I know it's not that noticeable on the Apple Watch, but still we got more storage. Starting with the most um, like noticeable or biggest one, and I'm not going to go too deep on this because I believe that you've heard a lot about it, but you can now uh, unlock your iPhone when you are wearing a mask just by using the Apple Watch. For this, you have to meet a couple of criteria. For example, your iPhone has to be on your wrist, the wrist detection has to be enabled, then the passcode needs to be enabled on the Apple Watch, and the Apple Watch needs to be unlocked. And when this, all of this is actually there, then the Apple Watch is going to unlock the paired iPhone without the Face ID. But it also has to recognize that you are wearing a mask. It's not like you just slide up and the camera sees the ceiling in the room. No, it actually has to see you wearing a mask. In order to set it up, you have to go to the settings of the iPhone. Then go to the Face ID and a Password section and scroll down until you see Unlock with Apple Watch and enable the specific Apple Watch you want to unlock your iPhone with. And it's only going to show up the paired Apple Watches. So that is that. By the way guys, if you are new on this channel, then make sure to subscribe because I kind of talk about more things and try to make videos as condensed as possible when it comes to these topics. So I think you would definitely benefit from subscribing and it also helps to boost the channel. So yeah, let's continue with the video. I'm going to talk about the other new features uh, later, but for now I want to talk about the security impact because I think that this is the topic that is getting kind of skipped actually because there is a lot to talk about when it comes to this. On uh, the Apple's page, on the Apple security update, there you can actually see all of the impact and everything that has been fixed with this update and includes many different things. You can read all of the about it, like you can read some entries for the uh, Apple Watch and all other things. So if you go, go and scroll to the uh, WatchOS 7.4 and if you tap on it, you can see there is a huge list of potential impacts that have been resolved and fixed. And all of these are security loopholes, some threads that have been like fixed by Apple and you can even see the people that actually found them or exploited them and let Apple know. So it is kind of good, like they they encourage people to find loopholes and that's how they can actually fix it. But for you, it pretty much means that all of this stuff is now fixed and your Apple Watch has again become a bit more safe. So you can read through if you want to, but it's mostly like processing a maliciously crafted web content or file or audio file may disclose some sort of restricted memory. It's, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to like regular people, but just be a, a rest, like rest assured that the Apple Watch is a bit safer with this. And to talk about the other features, well, if you live in Vietnam or in Australia, then from now on you have the option to use the ECG app as well as 
uh, via irregular hard rhythm notifications. And this is a feature that Apple tries to roll out slowly to the entire world, but for some reason it takes so long for uh, some countries to implement it. It pretty much uh, depends on uh, the local authorities and governments to approve it. That's why it probably takes so long. Besides that, you also have the option to select the device type of some Bluetooth devices which are connected to your Apple Watch. It's not that useful actually, but you can do it from the Bluetooth section of your Apple Watch. You just click on the I for more information and there you should be able to see the device type and you can actually change it from speaker to other to headphones and, and some other things. So this may be helpful. Plus on the Apple Watch, you now have the option to enable notifications for headphones. And that means that if you're listening to like AirPods and the music has been too loud for a longer period of time, you're going to get a notification that it could impact your hearing. And this is also kind of useful if you tend to forget that you use your headphones with a loud volume and you don't want to damage your ears and hearing. You can also stream directly to Apple TV some stuff from the Fitness Plus. I guess that not many people use it so far, but hopefully for Apple, more people are going to start using it. But you can actually do that with AirPlay 2 enabled TVs and devices. And you also have a couple of new watch faces, uh, very subtle ones and some new colors. It's nothing really spectacular or anything like that, but I guess that it is worth mentioning because it is new and it's something that Apple added. It's not very apparent. You have, for example, the purple color to match the brand new purple iPhone 12. So there are some new things when it comes to colors and watch faces as well, but like I say, it's nothing huge or groundbreaking. When it comes to the battery life and security, I mean, I talked about security already, but when it comes to like the performance, the speed and the battery life, it's kind of difficult to say. Well, of course, Apple tries to improve the speed constantly, but it's really difficult to test after just a couple of hours of running the software on the Apple Watch. It's not like you can instantly see the difference. It usually doesn't happen this way. Even though we had some software updates, which after which we could see the speed difference immediately, but I don't think it is the case with this one. I just expect very similar performance and battery life compared to the previous version, but also new features and improved security. So should you update, definitely, but also make sure to update your iPhone first because it won't let you do so without the iOS 14.5 installed first. Okay, so this would be it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and found some value in it. And if you did, I want you to hit the thumbs up. This really does help the channel a lot. And, and for more videos like these in the future, then just make sure to subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'm really grateful for all of my subscribers. So I just want to like say that I really do appreciate every single one of you. Thanks a lot for watching again and enjoy the rest of your day.